God bless you. I wanted to talk a little bit today about the false prophet. And to do that, I wanted to go ahead and get into our study of the Bible in the Gospel of Mark. We've been going through the Gospel of Mark, and we've, we've gone through 10 chapters now, and we've come to the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 10. And uh, this is the story of Jesus riding into Jerusalem. And uh, so let's get into that, and then I'm going to get into talking with you a little bit about these things that are happening in the last days and the coming of the false prophet. When they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent forth two of his disciples. And he said to them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as you enter into it, you shall find a colt tied there, whereon never man sat. Uh, loose him and bring him to me. And if any one asks you, why do you do this? Say to them that the Lord has need of him and straightway he will send him hither. We will send him back to you. And so they went their way and they found the cult tied by the door without in a place where two ways met and they loosed him. Okay, and so they went to a house there in Bethany, and they found everything just like Jesus said. They found this uh, cult, and, uh, and certain of them that stood there said to them, What are you doing? Loosen that cult. And they said to them what Jesus had told them to tell them. And so then they let them go. And they brought the cult to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon the cult. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees and strode them in the way. Uh, he, he started there in Bethany. He rode across the Mount of Olives and down the Mount of Olives westward into what is now the old city of Jerusalem. And uh, there he, he entered into the city. And so... And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, of course, means, oh, save. And this was a, a, the people had, had come out from Jerusalem when they heard that Jesus was coming. And they greeted him and uh, welcomed him warmly into the city as he came riding uh, on a little donkey, a colt that had never been ridden on before. <clears throat> now I want to note here how Jesus had told his disciples uh, everything that they were going to find. As they went into Bethany, he told them, he said, this is what you'll find, and I want you to bring that colt to me. And everything happened just as Jesus said it would. Uh, Jesus is God, and he could see everything coming. He knew exactly what was about to happen as he was riding into that city of Jerusalem. He knew that it was going to be the place and the time when he would lay down his precious life and spill out his precious blood for you and for me. And he did it because he loves us. The Father loves us so much that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in Jesus uh, has eternal life. Thank God whoever comes to the Father believing that Jesus died for our sins, believing uh, that Jesus rose from the dead, believing that Jesus is now at the right hand of the Father, believing in Jesus, the Son of God, whoever comes in repentance and faith, saying in other words to the Lord, Lord, I believe with all my heart that I am a sinner and I am unworthy of you and I need Jesus to save me and and the Son of God only was able to make atonement for my sins he paid the price he bore my punishment on the cross and because he paid the full penalty of my sins and he has suffered in my place I believe in him and I know that through him now I have eternal life 
And if you, if you come to God the Father believing in Jesus and ask him to forgive your sins, repenting and believing, that's what that is. When you say to the Lord, I believe with all my heart that I'm a sinner in need of forgiveness and I ask you to forgive me and save me now through Jesus Christ. If, when you do that in sincerity, you are a born again Christian and that is what it's all about. Brothers and sisters, that's what it's all about. And that's what we need to be telling this lost world. That's what it's all about. And, and Jesus came into Jerusalem humble on a, on a donkey. He came in the Father's name. He came in obedience to the Father and doing what the Father had called him to do. And he came in the Father's name. Uh, they said right here when they praised him, they said, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus came in the name of his father and uh, Jesus did not come glorifying himself and exalting himself. He did not come in his own name. He came in the name of the father. But the Antichrist comes in his own name, exalting himself, calling himself someone great, always boasting about himself. Uh, he doesn't come lowly and, and uh, as, a, uh, as uh, the true Christ came into the world, uh, a humble uh, man born in a barn, uh, living among a poor family, uh, ministering among the poor and the needy. He was a man that came into this world uh, for one purpose, to just serve us and to do for us. Uh, and, and as I say, the Antichrist is just the opposite. The Antichrist comes flying into Jerusalem uh, in a grand uh, uh, eagle. Air Force One and uh, getting glory and honor, uh, calling himself someone great, saying that he has come to do great things make uh, peace where no one else could and he's going to make the ultimate deal that no one else could do talking about himself all the time he comes in his own name the antichrist comes in his own name glorifying himself but the the true christ is humble and lowly uh in fulfillment of the prophecy and you know in zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 it said that uh, the Christ would come. Here comes your king, lowly and humble and riding on a donkey. He has come into Jerusalem now, a humble man. His disciples and, and uh, all the people are, are uh, praising him as he comes into the city. They're expecting him at this time to establish himself as the king of Jerusalem and the king of Judea. And uh, they're expecting they're expecting something that is is the exact opposite of what's about to happen. Jesus told his disciples, he said, he said, I am going into to Jerusalem to die. I'm going to be killed. I'm going to be spit upon. I'm going to be mocked. I'm going to be tormented and I'm going to do this. The son of man is go this is what is is foretold in the scriptures. This is what I'm going to do. And they couldn't understand it. They couldn't grasp it. You know, they couldn't, they couldn't see until later they would understand. But at the time, they just couldn't, they could not uh, grasp that these things were going to happen to their master, their king, their Lord, the, the one that they loved and followed. But uh, this is what it was all about. Jesus was coming into Jerusalem to die for our sins. And the people, you know, I want to note this, that the people that came out and praised him and laid down the palm branches as the donkey came in uh, carrying Jesus on its back, uh, I'm sure that many of those people sincerely did love the Lord Jesus and truly worshiped him in truth. But there were many, we must remember, there were many in the crowd that were just following the crowd. And this is what, sadly, so many people do. They just follow the crowd. And as you see, it was the same people that were following the crowd, praising him and welcoming him in, into the city. That same crowd would follow the mob later and follow the Pharisees and, and those that called for Jesus to be crucified. That same bunch of people that follows the crowd would follow the mob 
and call for Jesus to be crucified. These are the people that are not sincere. They are not the real deal. They just follow the crowd. What, whichever way the wind is blowing, that's the way they blow. That's the way they go. And so I just uh, want to say, you know, keep praying for these people that uh, are not standing strong with Jesus today. Uh, God can get a hold of them. Many of the people, we remember, many of the people later, after Jesus rose from the dead, after Jesus had uh, uh, come and, and witnessed to his disciples that he was alive, uh, after that, and the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to preach in the power of the Holy Spirit, remember that a lot of the people in the city uh, were convicted and stricken by what they had done and were saved and many were saved and so remember that those that right now are being blown around by every wind they're following donald trump and they're thinking he's the greatest thing they're just being blown by the wind that is prevailing uh god by the grace of god will get a hold of them god will get a hold of many of them now many of them will follow uh the devil into hell many of them will be lost forever but there are many that will be saved. Now, I'd like you to go with me to the Gospel of Luke, because Luke records something in this story that Mark did not record. You know, each Gospel writer, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, told the story of Jesus, and they each told it in their own way. Luke chapter 19 and verse 37 And when Jesus was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. So as they were praising Jesus, they were also praising God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. So what this is telling us is that uh, the works that Jesus had done, the many miracles of healing the sick, opening the eyes of the blind, the ears of the deaf, making the lame to walk again. The many miracles that the disciples had seen, this, this was an evidence for them that Jesus was truly the Son of God. They saw him uh, still the, the, the waters and still the wind by saying, peace, be still and the wind died down and the waters calmed down and uh, they saw him work great miracles and they were praising God for the miracles that they had seen. So God uses miracles, signs and wonders and miracles. Many times in the Bible we see this, that, that God confirms the testimony of his witnesses. He confirms the word of his prophets. He confirms the word of God through uh, a mir miraculous sign, a wonder, a miracle that will show the people that, look, this is my servant. Listen to what uh, my servant is telling you. We saw this in the life of Moses. You know, when Moses was sent to, to set the people free and uh, he went to Pharaoh and said, let my people go, the people of Israel, let them go out of their slavery and, and uh, I want to lead them out of Egypt. Well, God showed many signs and wonders, but also remember that at the same time, there were the magicians that were there and they were the, the liars and, and the deceivers and uh, they worked their wonders too. They were uh, operating by the power of the devil and they were working uh, signs and wonders also. God allows the devil uh, to exercise a certain amount of supernatural power within, within what, what God will allow. I mean, God doesn't just set him free to do anything, but God will allow the devil to do a certain amount of work. God will allow uh, a certain amount of deception uh, because God wants his people to be wise and to be discerning and to test the spirits and to know the difference. How do we know in these last days whether or not a sign and a miracle or a wonder, and the Bible says there will be many in these last days, 
Uh, there will be supernatural signs and wonders and miracles. Some will be the real thing from God. And some will be the counterfeit lying miracles and signs and wonders of the devil. Uh, how do we know the difference? How will we know the difference? Brothers and sisters, here's your test on whether a miracle is from God or whether it's from the devil. Here's your test right here. Does the miracle and the, the person behind the miracle and involved in this miracle glorify Jesus Christ alone? No one else but Jesus Christ. Is the true gospel of Jesus Christ, and we know the true gospel is that we are all sinners and we need to be saved through Jesus Christ. Is that true gospel of Jesus Christ being uh, propagated and advanced and uh, taught uh, by the person involved in this miracle? Is this miracle, in other words, glorifying Jesus Christ and his gospel only? Or is this a miracle that is in some way, somehow, rather, glorifying men, glorifying women, glorifying people, and bringing about confusion? Instead of a clear gospel message, understanding that we are saved only through Jesus Christ, does this miracle instead uh, propagate a false gospel, a gospel of confusion, Babylon, something that where people are not clear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not glorifying Jesus Christ himself alone. Uh, God's miracles, when God does a miracle, his purpose is always to glorify Jesus, the only way to the Father. God's purpose is always to bring honor and glory and praise to his son, Jesus, and the gospel of salvation through Jesus Christ. That is God's purpose. So when you, when you see a miracle or sign or wonder that is exalting Jesus Christ and praising him and the gospel of Jesus, then you know this came from God. When it does not do that in any way, shape, or form, then it is not from God. Satan wants to sow seeds of confusion. Satan wants to lead people away from Jesus Christ. Satan wants to lead people away from the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And so Satan is going to work his miracle signs and wonders to deceive and to lead people away from the true gospel of Jesus Christ, to lead people away from the one way of salvation in Jesus Christ, to lead people away from Jesus Christ. That's the purpose of the devil. And so that's how you know whether or not a miracle is from God. Recently, I made a video about the two witnesses. I want to also say here, how will you recognize the two witnesses? Right now, there are people, you know, saying, oh, I'm one of the two witnesses, or me and my buddy Joe here, we're the two witnesses. Right now, you've got people saying that. The, the two witnesses will never say anything like that. The two witnesses will not glorify themselves. The two witnesses will not be talking about themselves. The two witnesses will not be trying to convince people that they're the two witnesses because that's not their concern. The two witnesses will simply be doing their job. The two witnesses will be exalting Jesus Christ. The two witnesses will be witnessing about the gospel of Jesus Christ, how to be saved through Jesus Christ. The two witnesses will simply be doing their job as the two witnesses. And they will, there will be signs and wonders. Yes, the Bible says, you know, they will call down plagues in order to glorify and to bring attention to what, what God is saying. Repent and be saved. And so there will be signs and wonders, but the signs and wonders that they do will not uh, glorify them. It will not be about them. They will not say, hey, look at us. We're the two witnesses. They will simply do God's work and signs and wonders will be uh, part of the work that they do in the name of Jesus Christ, but it will all be to the glory of God. It will all be about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It will in no way, shape, or form be about themselves. The Bible says that in these last days, as the Antichrist rises up, also there will arise a false prophet. If you look in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 13, 
you see that the beast comes out of the sea. That is the Antichrist. The beast arises out of the sea. He has seven heads and and he has the ten horns and the ten crowns. Uh, that is the Antichrist. The beast out of the sea is the Antichrist. But then a little later in the chapter, chapter 13, you see the beast arising out of the earth. That is the false prophet. That is the second beast in Revelation 13. And the sec that second beast that arises out of the earth, that is the false prophet. And he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceives them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now I want to talk a little bit more about some of these things in a some coming videos and I've already talked a lot about some of these things in my past videos but in this video I want to just focus on this here that the 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 false prophet performs signs and miracles and wonders in behalf of the first beast everything that the second beast the false prophet is doing is to glorify the first beast, the Antichrist, to point people to the Antichrist, that they should worship the Antichrist. Because the false prophet is an agent of Satan, just like the Antichrist is an agent of Satan. And Satan, is uh, his heart's desire is to be worshipped. And he's, of course, Satan said, I will be as God. I will make myself as the Most High, you know, and I will, I will be uh, the one who ascends uh, above the stars of God and so Satan wants to be exalted and he's he's working through the Antichrist and the false prophet uh, but the Bible says they will worship the dragon and the beast they will worship Satan and the Antichrist and so the focus of Satan is to get people's attention focused on the Antichrist the beast and so the the false prophet's purpose is to point people to the Antichrist, to worship the Antichrist. And through worshiping the Antichrist, they're also worshiping the dragon, Satan. If you'll look in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, it says, talking about the Antichrist, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Now, it's saying that the coming of the Antichrist is after the working of Satan. It is accompanied by signs and lying wonders. But we see that it is, it is the false prophet who is doing these signs and lying wonders. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 20. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that had wrought the miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped the beast. And these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. So we see that it is the false prophet who is doing the wonders and signs and miracles by the power of Satan, even calling down fire from heaven, the Bible says. Uh, he's doing these things in behalf of the first beast. He's doing these things to point people to the first beast that they would worship the first beast, the Antichrist. In other words, everything the false prophet does, he says he's giving the uh, glory and honor to the Antichrist because this is, again, this is Satan's purpose to that everyone should worship the Antichrist. I've explained in a previous video why I am convinced that it has to be the Pope, a coming Pope, not Pope Francis, not the current Pope, but a coming Pope is going to be the false prophet. And I believe that he will take the name Pope Sixtus the Sixth, which means Father Sixth Sixth. Now, I've also made videos that I hope you'll watch about the Pope and why I believe the Pope is the, the false prophet and explaining why 
he is not the Antichrist. A lot of people, I understand, this is a traditional belief that started way back in the Reformation. And we can understand why the Reformers, and God bless them, they were wise people, started a, a Reformation uh, to, to call people out of the Roman Catholic Church and call people back to the Bible and to faith in, uh, you know, sola scriptura. Uh, faith only in, in Jesus Christ and, and the Bible being the sole authority by which we go. We thank God for the Reformers, but, but we can understand why in their day and time, back you know, in, when they were uh, arising up and calling people out of the Roman Catholic Church, we can understand why they thought that the Pope was the Antichrist. But today... We have, thank God, in these last days, when things are being finally revealed to us in these last days, uh, we have a better understanding. And we understand that the uh, Antichrist is a political world ruler with a military. The Bible is very clear. They will say, who can make war with the beast? He will be a man that has a military power that no one can defeat. And that is the President of the United States, who has that powerful military beyond any military uh, the world has ever seen. And I've talked a lot about that in my past videos. The false prophet is the one who points people to the Antichrist. He is the religious leader because the world will worship the dragon and the beast, Satan and the Antichrist. He's the religious leader, uh, the, the most prominent world religious leader. The Pope does not claim to be God. The Antichrist will claim to be God. Now, I know there are people right now saying, oh yeah, the Pope claims to be God. No, the Pope does not say, I am God. What the Pope says is that he is the infallible spokesman for God. The Roman Catholic Church teaches that when the Pope speaks on matters of faith and morals, he is speaking the very words of God, and he is, his words are infallible. So what the Pope claims to be is the infallible prophet of God, the, the prophetic word of God himself. So he is the false prophet. He is the one who says, I speak the words of God. I speak for God. And so that's the false prophet. And the false prophet saying, I speak the words of God, he glorifies the Antichrist. He says, worship him, worship the beast. The false prophet glorifies the Antichrist and points people to him. And it is the false prophet who is working the, the miracles and signs and wonders, even calling fire down from heaven, the Bible says. And that is how the world will be deceived through the workings of the false prophet. When is the uh, false prophet going to come on the scene? Well, we don't know. The, the book of Revelation, as I say, in chapter 13, it tells us the beast out of the sea comes first, and then the beast out of the earth comes later. And so we're, we're seeing the beast out of the sea rising up right now, Antichrist Donald Trump. And we're going to see this uh, false prophet rise up, I believe, in the near future. And uh, I, I sincerely believe that it will be Pope Sixtus the sixth.